in my honors thesis on um, autonomous navigation for micro air vehicles using reciprocal velocity on airplanes. Um, I collaborated on this project with my advisor, Dinesh Kanoka, and um, another grad student, Nikki. So this project was motivated by recent popularity in robotic systems. Um, probably most recently you've heard of the Amazon Prime Air where they're trying to deliver packages to your door using octocopters um, and Google's chauffeur, the self-driving car. Oh, also, um, the FAA is opening up the airspace as part of its next-gen air airspace program in 2015 to allow unpiloted vehicles to be integrated into the national airspace. So there's a lot of technologies that still need to be developed in order for this to be safe or feasible at all. Uh, so the problem we're trying to solve is this problem of automatic navigation, which means that there are collision-free paths being planned in real time with no external intervention from the human pilot. Um, we have different issues that arise with uh, micro air vehicles, which are like small aircraft like these, um, as opposed to traditional fixed wing aircraft. Like you, so with these you have up to six degrees of freedom that can be utilized, the three translational components, X, Y, Z, and the three rotational angles, which represent uh, roll pitch and yaw. Um, so there are additional dynamic constraints that we need to incorporate in planning for micro air vehicles. They also um, have less restricted flight plans because they're not really flying in like the same, or they're never flying in the same altitude as traditional fixed wing aircraft. So it's not the same process at all. And we need to take into account that they're going to be flying at altitudes that are interacting with humans. So, you know, air, normal aircraft don't have this problem of avoiding humans as obstacles in general. Um, so currently there are a lot of algorithms that exist for motion planning in 2D and 3D workspaces, but um, while a lot of these have been tested uh, and are pretty robust for being applied to physical systems in 2D workspaces, not many have been tested outside of simulation for three-dimensional workspaces. Um, so to solve this problem, we formulate a system of three components where we have a ground station, the physical agents, and the telemetry that connects the two. So for the ground station we use, um, we're modifying an existing implementation of one of these collision avoidance algorithms that has already been applied to physical systems and seemed to be successful in 2D and like extending it to 3D and applying it to the physical system. Um, for the physical agents, which is the actual the actual hardware that's flying, we use we use quadcopters, which is an artocopter that I'll talk about later. Um, and telemetry between the two is done by the radio. So there's um, both ends, both the ground station and the agents can transmit and receive via radio. So this is an example setup um, that we envision of two of these quadcopters um, and their corresponding ground stations running this path planning computation. And each of them has a radio module that transmits these, um, it's like packets just like the internet um, at using this Maverick protocol with the communications protocol. And so, um, for RVO, it's a local navigation and collision avoidance algorithm that has been implemented in software, or one implementation of this algorithm is RVO2, which we decided to use this because it's been applied to physical agents using these Roombas, basically, um, in two dimensions, successfully. So in this simulation, we see that the paths were computed um, both autonomously and collision free and also like you can see that they're smooth. They're not really like fidgeting around trying to figure out where to go. Uh, and it does take in some sensor error. So this is based on, um, this specific implementation is based on the optimal reciprocal collision avoidance algorithm, or yeah, um, which computes smooth trajectories. So you don't have this sort of like, you know, when you're trying to avoid a collision, like your shaky bow. Uh, so we use the 3D extension of this collision avoidance algorithm, RBO2 3D. Uh, so for the physical agent, as I said, we use the Arducopter. Um, it's called the Arducopter because the autopilot on board is Arduino-based. 
So it has this, um, right in here on the bottom shelf, there's this, uh, it's sort of like a portable autopilot that you can use on any autonomous system, and you just load the specific firmware for that vehicle. Um, and then there's a GPS module on board on the middle shelf, which also has a digital compass in it, and there's the telemetry module at the top. And so all of these components connect to the ARTI pilot, and you can send that information collected by um, the ARTI pilot, which has an IMU with like gyroscopes and a telemeter, um, and the GPS, you can send that through the radio module. So um, quadcopters produce their motion by varying the rotational speeds of the individual motors. And so um, varying the speed or having like a differential in speed creates a differential in the lift forces. So, you know, by speeding up all of the rotors at the same time, you know, it goes up. And if you slow them all down with the same speed, it goes down. So if you have any differential in the lift forces, the entire body will tilt. So um, we have to impose certain constraints on this to ensure that the configuration is stable, meaning that, like, you know, it will stay in this position that it intends to stay in rather than, like, crash to the ground. So, uh, you know, for example, like, it's not going to be, like, all spinning and doing a barrel roll disco because that doesn't make sense. And so uh, we need to, like, limit these rotation angles and account for what is a stable configuration in each of the combinations of these angles, which are expressed in terms of differential equations. So the third component, this communication between the ground station and the micro-air vehicles, we use NavLink, which is a communications protocol for micro-air vehicles. Um, so it has, it's a library of these header-only messages that contain information like, you know, the, the quadcopter might send to its ground station, you know, I'm going at this ground speed, this airspeed, I'm at these GPS coordinates, this is my altitude, this is my flight plan, my target waypoint is this. And, the, uh, and that information is collected by those onboard sensors. And then the, um, the ground station, in turn, would be able to, running its path computations to avoid collisions, send commands in the form of these Mavlink packets to say, like, you know, go to this waypoint. The, the microwave vehicle really has no knowledge that it's going to hit something. It's just that, like, the ground station says, like, go here or that sort of thing. Uh, so when we move from simulation world, which is completely perfect and does whatever we really want it to, to the physical world, we have all of these challenges that were not present before. So one major challenge is um, the accuracy of the positioning measurements. So this algorithm that we use assumes that the radius position and velocity of a given agent is known and the same, like, the same measurements are known for all other agents in the environment which is okay in simulation, but in the real world, you have, you know, <laughs> you might be saying you're in one spot, but really you're two or three meters over here because the GPS accuracy of, of these specific sensors is two to three meters, and you have a collision that you didn't intend. So um, we have to think about different ways of reducing this uncertainty. Um, another issue is that we have to make sure that the time that we can commute, or that we can compute a new collision-free velocity in like the face of an imminent collision is smaller than the latency of communication between the ground station and the quadcopter. Um, also a major issue that people don't really think about is battery life because um, these quadcopters and all quadcopters are controlled by electronic, um, electronic uh, controls and so it costs a lot of battery life. So generally they're about 20 to 30 um, so, towards this, we created a visualization um, using the 3D graphics engine over 3D to be able to visualize, like, the dynamics that we're incorporating and that the path planning algorithm is doing what we think it's doing before we put this on real quadcopters and turn it over. So, um, this is a, that visualization. It shows um, a scenario of these two micro-air vehicles represented by the blue spheres moving from one point on the sphere to the antipodal points on the sphere. So you see that right here, they're avoiding each other. Um, so we, towards this goal of,
incorporating dynamic constraints specific to pod copters. We've put specific constraints into the implementation that compute a new velocity for the agent that is collision free, but also in the bounds of um, what this RD copter can achieve and ensure that there's a generous time horizon. Um, we also put a safety bubble around the quad copters that accounts for this GPS error. Uh, and in addition, we have towards the goal of like reducing the noise and improving the accuracy of the measurements. We've looked at different methods such as VRBO, which is a modification to RBO that uses statistical inferencing methods to compute a motion model from noisy data. Um, and also this idea of like combining multiple positioning sensors, sort of like Google Indoor Maps does to, um, you know, in different environments select what is the what is the best measurement that we can get from that location. Um, so in future we're we doing will <laughs> we're doing this. <laughs> we're doing more. So, I mean, the goal is, that's not really the issue right now. The goal is more like 